Like, where does one get the... In fact, this Matthew kid does have a degree, clearly, in audacity. Because, Mike, no, guys, how do you wake up and decide you're going to fake being a doctor? Like, where do you start if you're going to fake being a doctor? Apparently, you start a disc game because the stethoscope is 80 rand. Anele and the club on 947. We have all reached a certain level of what the... <laughs> Going is going on in this here country. Yesterday, we were all... Uh, how long has this been unfolding, Tim Bigile, this uh, Dr. Matthew Lani story? Today's Tuesday, so um, Sunday, yes. Is this is Sunday is when the wheels started falling off? Yes. It took one person on Sunday going, hang, hang on. on a minute. Hang on. Hang on a minute. There is a 22-year-old guy on TikTok, very popular, huge numbers, yeah. huge engagement, uh, doctor, he calls himself Dr. Matthew, says he graduated from Wits. Oh, so he's a, he says he's an actual doctor. He says he's an actual doctor at 22. So with Doogie Hauser. I was going to say, yeah. he must be Doogie Hauser. Yeah, Doogie Hauser, the good doctor vibes, right? And graduated from Wits, although everybody who was at Wits around the same time do not remember him. He said he matriculated early at 16 because he was a genius child. He says he skipped grades 4, 6, and 8. Very specific. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm neutral here, but someone said you can't skip grade eight. You're literally the new school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, even if no one's ever skipped grade eight, guys, you can skip grade R. Who and that's about skipped grade eight. And then th that's a, that's about it. How much of a genius are you that you cannot be introduced to algebra properly? Mm. You know why? You, why do you say you're neutral here? Um, I'm hoping. Can I tell you? I was hoping, hey, that at some point. There'd be something that comes out to back his story to prove because he was so adamant he was doing videos on Sunday didn't explain us saying you know I don't owe you guys an explanation because you're not my patients I'm a real doctor and you guys didn't pay for my yes. degree and then yesterday another neither video did he by the he looks of things and yesterday a video dropped saying you know um my colleagues are messaging me it's my birthday and no one is no messaging to say happy birthday they're all asking me about this twitter harassment johannesburg last year in march we were all engrossed in the tinder swindler yes okay which i'm not saying simon leviv was right but at least he's just swindling people through love this is dangerous yeah. because the, now you're pretending to be a doctor i think being a doctor is a very serious thing right this man is administering vaccines oh did he oh, did he actually do that he, a lot of people were saying i got my vaccine from him i got my no. vaccine do you know he, this is what i'm saying that he is dangerous and the type of content that he is putting on tiktok like it's it's dangerous have you listened to this one Tingles are rash, so you will have a strip of blisters like that gentleman on your torso. Remember that when the shingles go, you can still have pain on the area where the shingle was. So that is called post herpetic neuralgia. And then in terms of um, treatment, we can give you antiviral medication such as um, aciclavir and then also some painkillers. So this is like real medical stuff. He's not Daily. telling you how to, how to get your hair to grow longer. Daily, daily on on on, daily. on, on, so on TikTok. Wild. He's got some sort of other like medical, you know, blog that he does to help you with this, to help you with that. It gets better. I saw a video where he said he has he's the youngest person to have a range of multivitamins basically registered. That that he's he's supplying to the UK. And to the rest of Europe as well. And he's the only one who can supply these pills. The right. only one. So for me, when I did like a deep dive yesterday, because I spent the better part of yesterday, like nose deep in this. Yeah. A, he's always doing his videos from his house. You, not once have we ever seen him in an office practicing a surgery, a hospital. Well, there was one video where I saw him walking through a hallway with a stethoscope and someone said, how does that work? And one of the doctors I follow said, babe, we're so overstaffed. When you see a man in scrubs, you're just happy there's help. <laughs> because, and in every video, he's got a stethoscope on, right? And then to me, what stood out the most, and I don't know how I know this because I've never graduated. My last graduation was uh, preschool. Um, <laughs> He's your doctor of radio. Yeah, th thank you. His graduation photo. He says he graduated from Wits, but he's wearing those those graduation caps. Uh, Wits doesn't have those when you graduate. Oh, but also, it, I mean, just from being online for the last three years, generally most of the doctors or professionals you see on like a Zoom or on video have their degrees in the frame in, the, yeah, in, the, in the, background. the background. Oh, he says he's got a degree and he he graduated with three distinctions, which you can't. You either graduate with a distinction or not. You can't get three distinctions. 
Oh, they did not do three degrees at the same time. At, at, the, at the age of 22, I'm yeah. just asking. <laughs> Super genius. I don't think universities allow you to take on three degrees at once. HPCSA, which is the, you know, the governing body for, for doctors, m- for and, medical doctors and medical council yeah. and health professionals. You have to be registered on there, mm-hmm. right, when you are a doctor. They were like, we don't know him. And then he records this, guys. Not me being reported to the HPCSA. So on Monday, I get an email from the HPCSA um, and it basically states that so a concerned member of the public has lodged a complaint against you. Can you please call the um, Health Profession Council of South Africa? So I do that. They said that they've never seen you posting videos of you in a hospital or a doctor's office. And when they tried um, switching your name on the registrar, you did not appear. So they think that you're a fake doctor. So I had to now give the HPCSA a my full name, my PACEL number, my HPCSA number for them to confirm that I'm registered with them. A hospital is my place of employment. It is not my TikTok studio. I'm not going to go to work with a ring light and set up a ring light and then I'm busy Lana doing TikTok videos. Guys, I get paid to be a doctor, not to be on TikTok. Oh, yes, like, but like... you're on TikTok. <laughs> he's digging his heels in. He's doubling down here. He's yeah. doubling down. He is literally saying that he is a doctor, but it is apparent that he is not. So has the, did the HPCSA, did they then confirm him? No, no they didn't. Oh. In fact, what they did is, give me a moment. The Health Professionals Council of South Africa has noted with concern a video of Mr. Matthew Zinge Lalani, who has gone viral on social media platforms. In the widely circulated video, Mr. Matthew Zinge Lalani claims to have been authorized by the HPCSA to make and distribute his video. The HPCSA would like to put on record that no authorization has been granted to Mr. Zinge Lalani. To, and I like the fact that they're calling him Mr. Never Doctor. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that, 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 that is them saying, you ain't no doctor, uh, to make statements on behalf of counsel stating that he's a registered practitioner. Guys, can you just wake up and decide you're a doctor? He's sick. Cindy, you've got a little bit of counsel on your side. You do a little bit of counseling. This you is definitely sick. Yeah, you literally have to jump through hoops to be registered with the HPCSA. There's a whole lot of documentation. There's community service hours. The, it is so difficult and they take it very seriously, their registration. So for him to claim that he's registered with them when he's not is I just, almost criminal. Yeah, like how easy is it to fake being a doctor? Because I know we make jokes about it. They're like, ah, this certificate is passed down from his dad. His dad was a doctor. Now he's doing right. it. Right? Like, you know, how easy is it? Like, and in your profession, is that something that you run into a lot where you guys are constantly having to check other people? To check other people. Doctors. And now you are all there. Let's say you're in the same theater, you see you in the same consult, and something is happening. You're like, mm-mm. Is this person really mm-mm. a doctor? Mm-mm. Let's not make sure. Mm-mm. I know the Gauteng Health uh, Department have pressed charges against him. Yeah, I was going to ask, is this not like proper illegal? Criminal. Ever, I do have a bone to pick with them because they did use him for uh, sort of influencer gigs where they were using videos of his even during COVID. Sorry, if the health department is not checking that doctors are really doctors, then we have an issue. I'm trying to think, if I had to fake some sort of qualification, which one would it be? I couldn't be an accountant. You guys would catch me out of the mats immediately. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Doctor, no. Pilot, no. Like, where does one get the... In fact, this Matthew kid does have a degree, clearly, in audacity. Because, Mike, no, guys. How do you wake up and decide you're going to fake being a doctor? Where do you start? What do you do? It sounds like he does. He didn't wake up and do that. I feel like there was a journey here because he started with TikTok videos. Then people started asking him medical things. This is what it sounds like. Then you've got to sort of double down. Where did you get your stuff? I'm laughing because when I asked this on Twitter, it's like, where do you start if you're going to fake being a doctor? Apparently, you start a disc game because the stethoscope is 80 rand. <laughs> You know what stood out for me, ne? This guy, like with this, like, he didn't just pop up one day and he's like, I'm a doctor. No, guys. On Facebook, there's thing, things of him saying, first year medical student, second year medical student, doing my internship at Barra. Like, he literally builds, like, all the time that he invested building this lie, he could have actually been a doctor by now. For somebody who claims that he's a genius and doesn't even know the difference between register and registrar, I mean, come on, man. Not a doctor, but a speech therapist. My name is Danny. Uh, easy solution. If you go onto the HPCSA website, there is a specific page 
um, where you can search for a practitioner. You put in the name and it will come up um, whether that person does exist as well as the HPCSA registration number. Hi guys, but if he's not a doctor, he certainly needs one. <laughs> <laughs> But now, Kathy, you're a paramedic, right? A BLS paramedic, yes. What does that mean? What does BLS mean? Uh, BLS is your basic life support, so it's uh, your entry-level paramedic. Okay, you see, honest person. Dr. Matthew would be like, no, I'm a surgeon, my baby. So now <laughs> I, I want to ask, when you go to the doctor, do you look, do you ask like for the certificate? Because Cindy do was just check? saying now that we, we, we're so trustworthy. We just go anywhere. I mean, we don't... We don't yeah, you don't, you just walk into the GP's office and all the certificates are on the wall and you just go, hmm, those must be real. Well, it depends. Like, for me personally, I go to trusted uh, centres like a Medicross where you know the doctors are registered. Uh, you know, you, you don't just go to some random general practitioner's office that's just popped up. I'll also say, guys, if you're using TikTok to figure out who you want to treat you, mm. there's also a problem. Like, you looked at his TikTok and you went, hmm, Maybe I should get him for a medical consult. No, but I, I, I can't hate on that because sometimes somebody posts like, oh, I did my, my facial here, I did this there, you know, and generally people are reposting. So the people who are reposting are people that you trust. So it's that, that's the point of influencing from the personal trainer you go to to the slimming tea oh, that you buy. This is the other pandemic, <laughs> personal trainers of the internet. <laughs> there are so many red flags when it comes to this guy. Dude. So it's what I keep saying about my warning about social media, right? What it does is it creates such a familiarity with mm, strangers mm. and trust that you let your guard down because you think, oh, well, this person has regular videos where they talk about this, they appear and on And no TV. one has called them out yes. yet. They're on radio, they're on TV. And that's the thing. It's like, look at it. And I'm not trying to be a doctor of psychology now, but how do you build trust by repetition? Mm -hmm. So if you are watching somebody go on every day about being a doctor, you start trusting it, You believe right? it, whereas in real life, you'd question more. No, no, Anela, don't be so harsh. Don't be so harsh. The man may not have gone to to medical school he mm. may not have done his uh, in-service training but Anela he identifies as a doctor <laughs> and Isn't that important and that is good enough oh, so people were asking how how did you study at Vits? you don't have a matric certificate mm. he said no he went to Cambridge Cambridge has come out released a statement saying uh-uh we don't know you we don't know him Vits has released a statement saying we don't know him the HPCSA, who we, we, we spoke to them personally yesterday because we asked them to come on the show. They were like, listen, it's still under investigation. We can't talk just yet. When we are allowed to talk, y'all are the first show we're going to come to. But for the moment, here's our statement. We don't know him. Yeah, they got no, they got no um, uh, listing of him. Dr. Kelly Prentice is on the line now and she's saying it is so difficult to get registered with the HPCSA. Good morning, doctor. Welcome to Anneli and the Club. Good morning. Hi, all team. Oh, good morning. Good. Listen, Dr. Kelly, before you carry on, please can you give me your number? I'm on the HPCSA yeah, here website now. here. I want to check you before you talk to us. We can't trust anyone any longer. <laughs> <laughs> talk to us. You, you, you just want to tell us how difficult it is to get registered on that website. Yeah, and I think also just the, the process for medical school, you know, through to being an independent practitioner, it's, it's not just one registration that you do. There's you know, you're permanently having to re-register, change your qualifications. So it is quite a, a process. From medical school, from the time that you do practicals and students, like a sort of student internship before you go, you know, after you've got your degree to do your formal internship, you're mm. registered with your student number. Then once you've got your internship, which is also a nightmare because they are very strict with logbooks, you can ask. I'm sure if you had to ask majority of the doctors throughout their career, internship logbook signing is a nightmare. Each department has to sign you off. Okay. If they make a smudge on the page, the HPCSA will not accept it. So you are literally running around like a headless chicken trying to get things re-signed. Mm. Then once you are finished internship, you have to register that you have completed your internship. So. The HVCSA used to do like a road show where they would come to mm. each province and you would have to go and register all your documents. Once you finish internship and you do community service, the same process starts where you have to get everything signed off. Also, if you are not like um, sort of a good 
doctor or say pick up that their problems. Your oh. person that you're doing consult or internship with, they won't sign you off. Oh. And then once you've finished with your comp then you have to register as an independent practitioner. And every year you have to submit documentation to show that you have um, CPD points that are up to date, that you're accredited. So it is unlikely that somebody who is not even recognized by the HECSA is actually a qualified practitioner. Right. In my, you know, like according to my sort of interpretation of it. Dr. Kelly... Um, I want to ask, is it actually physically possible, like in, we see it on TV, right, these mm. wonder doctors that are doc- is it actually possible to be a medical doctor at like 22, even if you were a genius? Because it sounds like there's so many internships and things you have to do that your, are yours. Your in-service training alone is, Car- is long, yeah. right? Is it possible? I think in South Africa it would be quite difficult because the school going age is generally set um, you know, you, you can't go to school, like, early. Yeah. Possibly overseas, because they tend to, like, if you show that you're, like, a genius or whatever, they push you up into higher grades. Yeah. But I think in South Africa, you, you may find the odd case where you have somebody who's really young that's practicing, but it's, it's unlikely that you would be have completed your six-year medical degree plus your two years of internship plus your full year of community service. Within four service. years. And then, like, <laughs> like it doesn't sound yeah. possible. Yeah. No, that's, that's not... Not possible. It doesn't really sound kosher. I, I haven't met anyone that's that young that. And the thing is, if there was a doctor who is 22 years old, I think all doctors would know about them. No, you would know because like, that instance, kid is a if, genius. If we, if out of nowhere there was a kid who's 14 years old and was amazing at radio, mm. right? We would know about them. Because you don't want to, like, there's a, it's a closer word for, from Tandabuza, you don't want to undermine someone, right? Mm-hmm. So when you go, if I go into a, a doctor's office, how do doctors feel if I say, what is your qualification? Can I see your certificate? Yeah, and also, I mean, let me see this thing. Wait, what did you study? Where did you study? You, you, know, you, know, you, get, you know, you don't want to question someone like because that. Because this is where we must go now. Yeah. If people like Dr. Matthew are, are going to be running around doing interviews on TV and radio. As a doctor. Do, getting work from the Gauteng Health Department. That's wild. And then th- this th- this. This clip right here is what he posted. I think he posted it yesterday morning. Mm. To me, this was the final, final nail in the coffin. But here, we're dealing with a sociopath. Hey guys, Dr. Mathia. Firstly, to all the colleagues that have been calling me this morning to check if I'm okay. I'm okay, guys. It's my birthday and you guys are not even call, like, calling to say happy birthday. You guys are literally just calling me because of what's going on on Twitter. So I don't have Twitter. So it was brought to my attention by my friends um, last night that I was trending on Twitter. So I had to now go download it. I rolled my eyes and then I just continued with what I was doing. And the reason for that reaction is because it's not the first time. I have also trended on Twitter with regards to my status, where people were saying that I'm lying about my status. I'm just using um, it to get views and all of that, and that they want medical results. I even had to do an HIV test on camera to prove to people that, you know, to prove it. People will honestly just be negative for the sake of being negative. My employer is aware that my name on social media it's different to my legal name and I am in compliance with the social media guideline of the Health Profession Council of mm. South Africa. I am not going to be complying to Black Twitter. Guys, can I just say, this is the youngest doctor in the history of the Dilulu. Just stop. This Dr. Matthews guy literally just puts a stethoscope on his shoulders <laughs> and puts them in his ears like, uh, how are you going, what are you listening to? That makes no sense. Because I was watching all the videos and in every clip, he's got the stethoscope in his ears. And then I wanted to judge and I was like, yeah, but the airports people, they look like this all the time. So like, who are we to judge? Let's wrap it up with Matapelo in Boxburg. You say you took your child to a doctor and what happened? Yes, my child doesn't like to eat pillows, but that's not the reason why I took her to the doctor. She has swollen gums. Okay, fine. So while I'm in the doctor, I'm like, okay, because my child doesn't like to eat, um, let me from my text, tell the doctor, maybe he can describe something for me so that my child can, you know... Open eat. up the appetite. Yes. Yeah. You know? mm. Okay, so I asked the doctor, the doctor said, no, it's natural, kids like this. Even the swollen gums, the doctor said it's natural. Huh? 
But uh, I said, no, what can we give it so that we can open her appetite? Doctor said, no, there's nothing we can give her at this age. She's still small yeah. to give her something for her appetite. Before I could go, the doctor was like, okay, but hold on. Doctor went on Google, <laughs> Googled. And then after he Googled, he said, okay, we can give it this. I and went to Google. He prescribed. Oh. Yes, on Google. Oh, In front of me, the doctor went on Google. Ooh. The doctor that I had to pay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so it also sounds like a questionable doctor, this Namata Bill. Yes, because I mean, how? Why? I'm the one who's supposed to Google because I'm not a doctor. But you are a doctor. You studied for this. Doctors like have those textbooks, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that they, you know, you they confer or to. Or databases with medicines you, 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 and all And they go things. and they yeah. look at other cases and all of that. You see, if I was in a doctor's office and they whipped out one of the books in, 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 in their office, like mm. like my therapist does it, right? Um, and then she's like, no, I just need to look up this thing. Type One, of thing. Yeah. What are you going to say? <laughs> gonna say? <laughs> Your therapist whips out a, what, an Eat, Pray, Love book? No, no. Oh. She's like, oh, there's a doctor in Canada oh, that's that has written case. about this. <laughs> right. So then she, yeah, then she'll whip out the book. Yes. But to me... That means that you've read that book before. And you know. You just want to go freshen up. Yeah, but lawyers do the same thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Exactly. When you're Googling. Symptoms of a child that doesn't want to eat. It's not make sure. Anele and the club. On 947.